Hello Rifters, this is Kiwi and we are I'm just so amazingly excited because we're about to see something super spectacular with Cumberland. Hey Cumberland. Hello. Both of us have been moving a house in different ways, me physically and Cumberland has been going hardcore to mention for the last couple of weeks because she was the winner of uh, Joy of Dimensions competition. Now you were the voted, is that correct Cumberland? The voted Joys of Dimensions, of Dimensions winner? Yes, um, first place from the Facebook portion of it. Nice, and one of your prizes is this amazing dimension which we've showed before and come in and had the pleasure of looking around it with you. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming. I just placed my last 44 items today, so it's completely finished, and I love it, and I hope everybody else enjoys it. Grats. That's an amazing feat. I've uh, had the pleasure of joining the the Dimensions Addicts at Deepwood channel that uh, we have for Cross Shard discussions on dimensions, and I've been with you nearly every day as you've done this, and your generosity as you've done it, and still kept in touch with everybody and got involved in their dimensions too has been astounding. Thanks for doing that for us. Oh, I thank everybody else for letting me because a lot of that was keeping me from total insanity um, fishing and as you go through here I think you'll anybody who has fished for dimension items will realize how much fishing I have ha actually had to do. Right, we've had uh, quite a bit of fishing discussion going on, the oohs and ahs and other things too as we get other stuff that we might not want and we're trying to get something so that's been amusing for me. But here we are, I'm so excited, we're both exhausted, so how this interview is going to go is beyond me, so I'm just so looking forward to this. I've got my coffee, I'm ready to go. Alrighty, let's go. Okay, I brought you up here to the top of my dimension, it's actually not the top of the whole dimension, but this is where the top of my building is. Um, everybody who saw the previous video or who has been in here realizes how big the actual dimension is. So instead of trying to fill the whole thing with bits and pieces, I just picked out a couple pretty spots that I had in my head for things in particular. And so here at the top of the top pool, I have a temple. Um, the name of my dimension is Villa della Peschina Luna, which is a Villa of the Moon Pools, and it has a Roman theme, and this is my Roman temple. Very nice. I haven't seen any of this. I decided to keep away while you were building so I could have this surprise with you. It's very nice. And you'll notice all of the stone pedestals that I fished for. <laughs> Yes, I'm counting them, and I'm like, yup, that's a lot of fishing already. So then, if we come back down this way... You can listen to the birds chirp. This is my olive grove. Are those made trees? Yes, these are, I think, are they twisted white bark and each one is actually two of them that I've taken and twisted together. Very nice. They almost remind me of the Lord of the Rings trees, you know, the whole feature of them. But I was thinking, wait, I haven't seen that model. Yep, I've taken, each one is two of them twisted together. When I was in Italy, the olive trees were so amazing. There was one that we were able to take a picture of ourselves actually putting our head through part of the tree to take our picture through the tree. 
and so the olive trees kind of made an impression on me. Italy makes an impression on me. I look forward to going there one day and I'm doing zoom shots, keeping away from where we're heading, looking at the trees and that amazing sky that I fell in love with the first time I came in here. Yeah, Italy is amazing and I tried to capture as much of that as I could. Um, and you know, with the weather and the trees and everything there, Moonshade Pools just has such a nice feel to it, and I think it was perfect to put a Roman villa. Nice. And so if we come over here, this was actually the last part of my dimension that I added today. I wanted to put in a little place to come and sit and drink some wine and check out the view. When in Italy. And like I said, this was the last little bit that I added today and kind of messed around with it and brought a couple friends in to look and see what they thought and if it was a good spot and should I add trees, should I not add trees. <laughs> and so now we'll come back down the hill to the vineyard. Oh nice, you put fruit on the trees. Nice little touch. And then in the baskets we have the picked grapes. <laughs> ready to be made into wine. Very clever. Mushroom caps? Yes, shrunk down mushrooms. <laughs> they come in handy. I'm seeing them in so many different ways. That's awesome. Well, we tried several different things. We took the red berries first and stuck them down in the baskets and I had a couple of my friends here and we're like, eh, no, we don't really like that. And so we were kicking around different ideas and Embry, she said, what about mushrooms? And she was talking about the purple ones. And I immediately thought of these because they were bumpy on the top. And so we tried them and she's like, oh yeah, good choice. So I credit the mushroom idea to Embry. You have such a great way of, uh, or a great supportive team about you. And I think that comes down to your personality because you're so generous. So people are wanting the t to do the same thing with you and it's great. Well, and I've happened to fall into a great guild with great people in it, and we have such a good time, and they keep me entertained, and then I've met so many nice people from all of the shards through Dimensions and stuff, and so glad that we have the Dimensions Addicts channel and invite each other and go hopping around, and everybody's so creative. I'm glad everybody is so generous and shares ideas. Nice, and from tomorrow I'll be opening Vent Up for Dream d uh, Dimension Addicts too, and re-aligning re that, so we have a vent to come on and chat as well. Excellent. Okay, this is my pride and joy. This is a wine press, and it is built from a replica of the wine press in Villa de Mystery in Pompeii, Italy. They, when they excavated the villa, they found the wine press that belonged to that villa where they had made wine, and they had, um, that is actually still there, I've seen it, and then this, they had a model that was available to look at online, and so I looked at pictures that I had taken and pictures of the online model. It is amazing how realistic you make things, and I know your references to uh, real life structures and things like that you've mentioned before, but this is, uh, this is awesome. This is history in the modern version. And like I said, this is, this is my baby. This is my pride and joy. And um, my degree is actually in world history, and one of my areas um, that I studied specifically was the Roman Empire and so getting to go to Italy was a dream and then I'm just so proud of how everything turned out. <laughs> and you 
should be. You mean they didn't just stand on things on grapes in a bucket? Like you see in movies? Um, smaller vineyards actually did, but the larger ones had wine presses that they would use to press more because I guess stepping on it took too long. I don't know. <laughs> nice. I got you off follow now I got to get different angles because of my majitness. <laughs> well, everything here is probably still dwarf sized because all of my characters are midgets themselves. <laughs> we'll go to the front door. That's why Kaylee digs you. Okay, this is the front door. Very nice. And if we come in, we enter into the atrium. And uh, many Roman villas, they did not have windows to the outsides because um, the streets full of noise, dirty, smelly. So instead, they would have an opening in the roof in the atrium to let in fresh water that they used for drinking and bathing, and also to let in air. And then, as you will see when we get towards the back of the villa, there would be another opening where they would have an indoor garden area, also to let in ventilation. So all of the rooms then would open onto the interior portions of the house that had this open um, area for ventilation and air and sunshine. And all of the bedrooms are built off of the atrium. And I tried to give each one a little bit of different decorative flair. To the, and you'll uh, notice each... To the train dimension, you can see so many different things used in this one item. Like I'm looking at, at the closet and there's three things in that closet. And it looks great. Fantastic. I've always enjoyed your personal touches. Oh, thank you. I was going to point out here, each bedroom has a chamber pot. <laughs> so as we go into each bedroom, that's one thing that you'll notice. Um, I tried to be as authentic as possible, so there is no flushing toilet. Over here is the green bedroom. And Embry said that this cabinet here, she said that this is actually the entrance to Narnia. So if anyone was wondering where the entrance to Narnia was, apparently it's in Pompeii. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this is my bedroom. I laid dibs to this one. As you do. As you should. And Embry laid dibs to this one. Very nice. I'm looking, uh, I'm doing a little project on the side, so I'm, I'm chuckling at the fishing items. Um, and I love, my favorite thing right now is those open books. I had seen in somebody's dimension, I couldn't even tell you whose, they had flipped a book over and had it laying face down like they had been reading the book and had laid it down. I had never, for some reason, had never flipped the book over. And when I saw that design, it immediately went off in my head that this is what I wanted to put on my walls. All right, I've done a painting with those, so I'm looking forward to Showing people that too. Awesome. Then over here is a little shrine. Each of the Roman houses would have had a little household shrine. Very cute. I love that. I was pleased with it, and it didn't take that many items. Right, that's what I'm looking at. You've changed an item completely without using too many. Looks great. 
This room is called the triclinium and it is actually a Roman dining room. They would have eaten on tilted couches. So lying down, facing, facing. lounging, sitting, yes, they would have all just kind of laid around, reclining, eating. Why did we change that? Come on guys, this is what I want my dining set to look like. This is what we do at our house, what are you talking about? No, it's not coming to your house. And then if we come in here, this is the tablinum, which is their version of a study, and the master of the house would have met guests here. Um, one end was enclosed by curtains that could be opened for ventilation, and the other end had wooden shutters or a wooden screen that would block it off. So um, I think that I'm probably... Uh, myself and Annalie are maybe the only people who have ever purposely fished for workbenches. No, yeah, you aren't, but I'd say it's very few because I've been purposely fishing for them too, but it's very rare. Very, 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 very rare. <laughs> but that yeah, I most thought people that. thought I was crazy when they said, what are you fishing for? I'm like, workbenches. They're like, oh my god, you are kidding. Take mine, please. Right. And, uh, the sliding door idea is going to rock a lot of people's boats, I'm pretty sure. It turned out really well. Um, I started, I had actually three different things. I had the lacy tables in here, and they were very pretty. And I had these made from the workbenches, and then I also made, um, using the planks, um, kind of the crosshatch slatted screen which looked very nice but each of those took 50 items which was a hundred items for just this one little section so I deleted that immediately and then brought in several people to look at the screens and look at the folded workbench the sliding doors and everybody thought that the lacy screens looked like windows and it's like I don't want it to look like windows so decided to go with the more authentic looking wooden screen. I think that that is definitely what's going on here the word that rings out loud and clear for me just seeing the inside of the house so far is authentic I love how you fought your history or your love of history into keeping this as authentic as possible that's really amazing Thank you. That's really what I was going for. <laughs> so then if we come on in here, this is the peristyle, which is the garden area. Now, are these your pools that you won, or are they part of the dimension? These are pools that I won. I have used three of them in here. Um, you saw the first one in the atrium. There's this one, and then when we go in the bath, you will see the third one. Nice. You can kind of tell because of the cloudy blue that it has. It's so pretty. Yes, and I put a tile underneath to block it because you can't swim in the pools, and they get rather large, and I didn't want people stepping in here and falling through and being under <laughs> and having just kind of a blue ceiling over their head. All right. I did an interview with Castasia. If anybody wants to see how big those pulls go at the end of Castasia's interview, who was the uh, overall winner voted by Tryon uh, for the same competition that Cumberland won, you could see how big the pool goes on her sweetheart's interview. Yeah, they do get quite large. And this wall decoration right here that you just went up to, um, I was visiting Radish's dimension and she had a version in one of her rooms with the amphora and the vines and I liked it and asked her if I could borrow and modify the idea and she very graciously said yes and I'm so glad because it's one of my favorite parts now. 
and that right there is the spirit of the dimension community that's being created. Uh, it's one thing, like there's a, there's a lot of things. Everyone's going to gain ideas from somebody else's work because nothing has not been done as far as creativity goes. But it's a nice touch when people ask each other if they can borrow something or if uh, they can uh, modify something. That's really nice community. And Radish is the other blog writer. There's three or four different blogs for Dimensions out at the moment, but consistently writing. Radish has been around since the beginning, and if you haven't seen uh, Radish's blog, please check it out. It's Home Decorator. I always forget names. So, what's the name of Radish's? Better Homes and Dimensions. There you go. Better Homes and Dimensions. And you're looking for Bum Radish, isn't it? Her main character? Her main yes. Character? And she was actually, the when I first started doing Dimensions, she was the first one I had stumbled on. I was trying to decide which one I wanted and didn't really know much about Dimensions. And she had an article called Location, Location, Location. And I still keep that bookmarked so that if somebody asks questions about it, it's like, go read this. It will tell you what size they are, how many item slots they have, whether they have buildings, whether they don't. It's fantastic. So if we come on back down here, I call this my Fifty Shades of Green room. It's just a nice little lounge room where we could sit and enjoy the summer nights. Go, go, Bravain Cheers. Love it. I love the way and the, the next use of books you've got going on here too. Oh, thank you. And another little lounge room. So from a Each one has just kind of, of a slightly different one. theme. From a historical point of view, would this be an entire family living in one place, or just one family and people come and stay? It would have been a family and their slaves. This is just kind of like a little work room, some benches to sit down, a work table. So even, you know, everyone's always wondering things, and this is what I love. It's the little details. Uh, just to make something look more authentic that you place there, you know, and, and I know it's all about item count. So when you start a structure, you try and make the structure with as less as possible, right? Because you know you're going to push that lim limit to the max and try and come up with some uh, ex extra little things in it to make it that more authentic. I actually built the whole house first and was really pleased that I had so many items left afterwards. I really don't feel like I had to skimp anywhere. And this has grossed everybody out so far, but it's also like one of my favorite things. Um, it's the latrine, and it would have been like a little stone cube with a hole in the front and a hole in the top and they would have either squatted or sat up there but the thing that grosses everybody out is they didn't have toilet paper they used a sponge on a stick and you didn't have your own sponge <laughs> alrighty then you heard that first at Rift Dream Dimensions if you haven't heard that before <laughs> I'm glad I've eaten that's too funny and then this is the storeroom, and it has a little bed here for the slaves. I'm going to come in here and count your workbenches one day. You realize that, right? I had counted at one point, but then I've fished since then, so I'm not exactly sure how many's in here. You haven't even seen them all yet. Because there's more in the kitchen. Yay, workbenches.
I love how you still managed to put so much stuff inside as well, but kept it to the primitive uh, kind of feel. You haven't, like, I know it's sometimes you want to put pretty things or something, but everything here has remained as it would have been, you know? The only thing that I would have added if I could, there would be a lot more paintings on the walls. That's how they decorated. And even the kitchen would have had paintings and such in there. This is the bath. This is where I used the third pool. And then this room has a fireplace, so if it was chilly and the other rooms weren't comfortable, we could come in here and keep warm. And there's snacks here on the table if you're hungry. Nice. This is where I'd be. Snacks and fireplace. This is your baby and to be honest I'm I'm blown away. I'm I'm googling I googled on my laptop <laughs> what this looked that looked like while you were chatting and it's it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I did not have a ram's head to put on the end of the beam. That's the only thing and I don't know, we looked at using the Sobek statues and the horses and none of it would work so it doesn't have a ram's head but I'm still proud of it. And what is the name of your dimension once more Cumberland? I'm not going to be able to pronounce it. Villa della Pescini Luna. And, it's held by and I had to look up how to pronounce it. Oh, and it's held by your alt, right? And what's the name of your alt? Eponirith, and I put it on her because I didn't want to close Cumberland's other dimension, so um, they did give me a choice of which character I wanted the key on. Very nice. That was very generous of Tryon, not only for that, uh, that generous action, but giving you this dimension and Castasia as well. A uh, bit of pressure put on you to get finished by April 1st, but you rose to the challenge, and this is raising the bar, for sure, and it's the authenticity. Uh, there's lots of fantasy out there, there's lots of events, there's lots of occasions, but I genuinely appreciate that your love of history is what came out here. You've encompassed it so well. Thank you for doing that for us. Well, thank you. Like I said, I hope everybody enjoys visiting as much as I enjoyed creating. And yeah, you know, Elrar said, can you be ready around the 1st of April? But I think anybody who gets a new dimension and has, you know, that little tickle of an idea, everybody knows it's not so much pressure as you almost can't put it down. Oh, I know that feeling. And this isn't a tickle, this is uh, like a funny bone reaction, a domino effect. Everyone is really going to be spoiled seeing this, uh, especially in the live stream. Hopefully it gets other people involved, including other historian lovers like you. Uh, it's so great to see why people do certain things and what uh, challenges they give themselves, because you can do that with dimensions. That's what I'm appreciating the most since starting the blog, is meeting why people do them, and then the flavors they bring in, the reasons why they do that too. Everybody has a story, and I love that I was able to have a historical journey come in here. It's so nice. Yeah, I can't wait to see what everybody else does. Um, several people who have come to visit have told me what they plan to do with their moonshade when it becomes available, and I can't wait. I just can't wait to see what they do. That sky, that sky is capturing me every time, so that's where I'm headed. So this is Kiwi from Rift Dream Dimensions. I'm with Cumberland over on Deepwood. We're looking at her amazing moonshade dimension that is being released mid-April and will be on live stream on April the 1st. And it's been extraordinary once more visiting with you. 
and we hope we see a lot more and I have no doubt we will of you again in the future. I don't know exactly when the live stream is. He said around the 1st of April, so it may not be exactly April 1st, but yeah, as soon as I find out anything, I will for sure be letting you know. Thank you, Cumberland. Thank you.